So the system shown is subjected to three axial forces, P1, P2 and P3. What is the total change in length due to the loading? And we're given Young's modulus of the material, which is 70 gigapascals. So this question is an axial deformation question. Um, it's asking us to find the total change in length. So we should be able to do that using the sum of PL on AE for each of the different sections that we look at. So we're going to have a total of three sections here. So we need to introduce a new section every time the loading changes. So basically we're going to have a section here between A and B because we should have a constant force through that um, section. We're going to have a second section between B and C. Again, we should have a constant force acting through it. And then between C and D again, we should have a constant force as well. So the total um, axial deformation is going to be PL on AE for section AB and then for section BC and then for section oh, CD. Okay, so we need to go through and find the axial load P, the length L, the area A and the Young's modulus E for each of our sections. So let's start with um, drawing a free body diagram and taking cuts through each of our sections to find the internal loads P in each case. So free body diagram. Okay, draw the forces on. So P1 is at the top and we're told that that is 250 kilonewtons. The next one is P2, and this one is 400. All right, the next one is P3, and this one's 275. And then at the bottom here, it's like a fixed support. Um, usually we draw a fixed support as a horizontal, vertical, and moment reaction. But since we've only got vertical forces here, and they're all acting in a straight line, the moment reaction and the horizontal reaction are going to be zero. Um, and this one, which I'll call Rd for the reaction at D, is going to have to be all these three added together if it's to be in equilibrium. So my forces in Y has to be zero. And this works out to 925 kilonewtons. So let me just label. This was A, B, C, and D. All right, so for section, let's start with AB. What we need to do is take a cut through it. That's this section here. And redraw the free body diagram of either the top side or the bottom side. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take the top side since that's easier. Only one force to contend with. So that's the 250 get, gets transferred across. And then at the cut point here, we need to replace it with the internal load. We're only going to have a axial load. Um, so that's PAB, and we know that sum of forces on this have to be equal to zero. So that means it's going to have to be 250 kilonewtons. All right, this is the internal load through that section. And the other thing that is important is the direction. So whether it's causing this uh, section to be a compression or a tension section. And we can see that this is pushing onto the member. It's going to try and make it smaller in length. So therefore, it's a compression member. All right, so now let's do the next section. I'm going to go with BC. Now remember, you can only take one cut at a time. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And now we're going to cut through here, which is between B and C, and look for the internal load here. Now again, you can either redraw the top or the bottom side of your diagram. It doesn't matter. So carrying across, we've got the 250 and the 400. And then at the cut point here, we need to replace it with the internal load. And that's going to be P, um, BC. So again, we need to make sure that forces are balanced on here. Some of forces in Y have to be zero. So negative 250 minus 400 plus PBC has to be zero. So therefore, it's going to be 650 newtons through that section. And thinking about tension and compression, this again is pushing onto the member. So therefore, it's going to be a compression section. So we've got one left to go um, for section CD. 
All right, again, remember, we can only take one cut at a time. So this time we're going to cut through here and redraw one side of the diagram. This time I'm going to take the bottom side. So all that we've got is this 925 here. And at the cut point, we need to replace it with the internal load, PCD. It's going to have to go downwards if they're to counteract. When we sum forces, this is going to have to be 925. And again, thinking about tension or compression, this is pushing onto the member, trying to make it smaller. So it's going to be a compression section. So actually, all three of them this time are compression. All right, so we now know the internal load in each of our different parts. Um, so we're probably going to be able to go back and substitute into our axial deformation equation. I think everything else is pretty much given. The lengths we know for each of the sections, the area we know for each of the sections, and Young's modulus were given as um, 70 gigapascals. So let's go ahead and substitute in. So we'll start with section AB. We said that it was 250 kilonewtons. Now I'm going to convert everything back to base units. So that's going to mean that my axial deform deformation comes out in meters. Okay, so this is 250 kilonewtons. That means we times it by a thousand to put it into newtons. Um, the length of our section AB, that is this one here, it's one meter. The cro uh, cross-sectional area we're told is 0 0.25 meters squared for that part and Young's modulus we need to convert it so it's giga which is 10 to the 9. So the only other thing to think about is whether this is a positive or a negative in terms of the axial deformation and that comes down to whether it was tension or compression. It was compression so we're going to treat that as negative because it's going to get shorter in length. Cool so that's the first one done. So now we're up to section BC. So the internal load through this section P, we decided was 650 kilonewtons. So sub that in. Again, I'm going to convert all the units to base. The length of this section, this part in here is 1.2 meters. The area of this part is 0.35. And we know that the Young's modulus is 70 gigapascals. Other thing is whether it's a tension or compression, for the positive and negative, we say compression, so therefore negative in here. All right, last one, which is CD. So the internal load we said was 925. We need to multiply it by the length, which in here is 0 0.6. And next, we need the area, which is 0 0.5. And Young's modulus is still the same. We also said this one was a compression section, so it's going to be negative as well. So if we type all of that into a calculator, we end up with negative 6.2 by 10 to the negative 5. Everything's in base, so it comes out in meters. If you then want to convert it into millimeters, which makes sense because all of our options here are presented in millimeters, we need to times this by a thousand. So when we do that, it comes out to negative 0 0.062. And just remember that the negative is telling us it's getting smaller or shorter. Okay, so jumping back over here for our answers, um, it's just asking us for the total change in length. So essentially the absolute value. So we're saying that it's getting a change in length of 0 0.062. And that is indeed one of the answers here. So that's what I'd answer this question with. So that's all there is.